The angle sum identities and angle difference identities can be terrific tools for tough tasks in trigonometry. But they're hard to remember. It wouldn't be so bad if there were only one identity, but there are one, two, three, four, four of them, and they all look really similar. So what do we do? We could use a mnemonic like cilantro and peanut butter, ew. Cilantro and cashew butter? Mmm. Sample a sandwich, babe. And this may be useful, but I kind of dislike this memorization method, because it doesn't actually help us to understand this identity. Luckily, I have a better approach. And that's not bad grammar, it's an imaginary number. Addition with angles corresponds to multiplication with imaginary numbers. We convert the angle A into the number cosine of A plus I times sine of A. And you can remember that I goes with the sine because there's an I in sine. <clears throat> there's an I in cosine too. Who said that? Hello? Um, well, what I meant is that there's no I in the shortened version, COS. Anyway, if we want to add the angles A and B, we convert each of them into their complex number and convert the addition into multiplication. We can then distribute, substitute i squared for negative 1, rearrange, and we're left with this result. Or, starting again with a plus b, we could convert the sum directly, cosine of the sum plus i times sine of the sum. So we have these two different results from the conversion. We can match the sections with an i to get the sum identity for sine, and the blind sections without an i to get the sum identity for cosine. And so, if you're ever in the middle of a test, or trying to solve a riddle for a quest, just remember that the cosine identity looks like a real result from complex multiplication, and the sine identity looks like an imaginary result. But why? Let's take a look at the unit circle. If we have a point at angle B, we can make this right triangle. Now recall Sokotoa. No, not like Gali Nuva. So -ka -toa. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and this is the unit circle, so the pot is just 1, meaning that cosine equals adjacent. And similarly, we see that sine equals opposite. Now, let's put the unit circle into the complex plane, with the real number line horizontally and the imaginary number line upy downy. Then this point is at cosine of b plus i times sine of b. And this is that form that we saw earlier. The angle b gets mapped to cosine plus i times sine. And this map comes from... Ugh, that's a tough word. It's pronounced Euler. Really? Okay. This map comes from Euler's Euler. You meant formula? Get out of my video. This formula relates the trig functions to an imaginary exponent. And it's why that mapping works. It's the exponent that turns addition into multiplication. If we use a plus b, we can convert directly, or we can distribute the i, split these exponents, and then convert separately. And then we could just distribute this like you saw earlier. And speaking of things you saw earlier, the unit circle also helps us to get the angle difference identities. We can just take the angle sum identities, and plug in negative b. A negative angle goes in the other direction, meaning that the triangle gets flipped upside down. These triangles share a horizontal side, so their cosines are the same, but the upy downy sides are flipped, so we need to make the sine negative. Then we can rearrange to get the final identities. So there you have it. That's how I remember the angle sum and angle difference identities. Thanks to my supporters on Coffee for helping the channel, and thanks to you for watching. And stay tuned. I've got an exciting video coming up where I say math words and you listen.